Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss how an American lawyer thinks Space Karen may potentially mess up Trump's campaign with his obviously corrupt lottery being used to, amongst other things, gather voter data in a move reminiscent in some ways of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. But first, for daily political commentary, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So, yes, Space Karen, trying to make himself the most useful of Trump's campaigners in return for being able to pretty much run the country for his own interests as one of the Orange One's close advisors in government. In fact, actually a member of the government. His latest is a petition in Pennsylvania, one of the key swing states. He is inviting voters or eligible voters, shall we say, in the states to sign his petition where they would have to state that they agree with various MAGA principles, register to vote and, of course, provide their details. In return, they're put in a raffle where one person each day wins a million dollars. But the governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, who is clearly no supporter of Trump, has suggested that officials look at the legality of the scheme. But an American lawyer has gone a bit further. Seth Abramson, who's a well-known legal commentator in the United States, has identified where he believes the scheme breaks the law. He makes the argument that people are being financially induced to register to vote. So you, you, you're creating votes as a result of financial inducements. And also because of the political commitment, it's encouraging more of one type of voter than it is another, you know, because you've got to sign up to various principles which are more likely to sit well with Trump voters than Harris voters. Now, obviously, of course, anyone could just sign the pledge and, and back these policies and then still vote for Harris in the anonymous election. I mean, I guess one argument there would be that honest people would not sign a pledge and then immediately renege on it. But Abramson takes the line that, so if the FBI decide to investigate this and they find a single person who says, yep, I, I voted for Trump because of Musk's offer to put me in a million dollar draw, that would be evidence of a breach of electoral law. And, and numerous legal experts in America are pointing out that it is a breach of law to financially induce someone to vote at all. So actually, it makes no difference, really, uh, according to some, whether these people ultimately vote for Trump or not. You don't have to prove that. If the scheme is encouraging them to register to vote at all, and it's clearly encouraging more people who are minded to vote Republican than Democrats to vote, then that's breaking the law. And, and if the vote in Pennsylvania is close, and it could well be, it's one of the swing states, and it's in Trump's favour, well, you open up legal challenges. You know, as Abram says, in 2020, Trump's team opened up legal challenges all over the place. They tried everything to get results overturned. Rudy Giuliani ended up looking a proper tit. And actually, I think did he, he ended up committing offences in order to claim offences against his boss, didn't he? So Abramson, <laughs> he ended up suffering. Abramson reckons that if the result is close... And there's evidence that Republican registration figures are skewed compared to historical data. In other words, that this scam of uh, of Musk's actually massively boosted Republican registrations. Then there would be a case for an investigation into the way the election was run in the state. After all, it would suggest that there were people being registered to vote because of Musk's million dollar a day raffle. And it's a scheme which encourages more people who are going to vote for Trump than for Harris. It's more than a little bit dodgy. Mind you, he does say that the FBI should really be launching this investigation into Musk's scheme now. If they wait until after the election results, it could look like the investigation is motivated by the results rather than the evidence, because the evidence is there now. And there'd be more accusations of, you know, stealing the election, the Democrats stealing the election. I mean, those accusations, of course, are still going to fly if Harris wins. Um, and I can see the, the logic in that. What I'm not seeing at the moment is reports that the FBI are investigating. So that's a little concerning. You know, the, the umpa lumpa of vengeance tried to push his legal tricks as a reaction last time. This time, his team have been preparing for years. And that's because they know they'd lost the election. They know that. And they know there's a good chance they were going to lose the next election, as in this one. You know, and they've known this for years. So they have been spending years carefully preparing to rig the system against Democrat voting areas where they can. 
and lay the groundwork for other dodgy practices in certification of the results as well. And when the results come in, if they don't like them, they are going to be more prepared than last time to press their case. This time, presumably, they will not need Giuliani melting outside a garden centre next to a sex shop. But it may well be that the only successful legal challenge could potentially be from the Democrats. And that Space Karen could well be the one who provides the easy evidence for investigators. Mind you, this is still to be avoided. I mean, imagine the scenario. Let's say, I mean, Trump has managed to convince millions that the 2020 election was stolen, right? So imagine the scenario. Pennsylvania, the results initially go narrowly to Trump. Then there's a legal process which ends up by whatever mechanism shifting the results to Harris. Even if that means a, a you know, a re-vote, a re-election. I don't know how that would work. That is a recipe for trouble right there. That is an absolute recipe for trouble. So, yeah, if this scam is illegal, and, you know, it seems to be, there's a lot of people suggesting it is, it should really be shut down immediately, I would have thought. Though I suppose there is another scenario at play here. So, it could well be that Harris wins Pennsylvania despite the scam. That it is then investigated anyway. I must end up going to prison. Oh, no, we will appeal to the president to do, uh, like, pardon him. Oh, no, Harris won. Oh, no. You know, but even that would arguably look like an act of political vengeance to MAGA Americans who already believe that the state and the judiciary are one and the same, even though the judiciary keep finding in their, their messiah's favour. And it's not helped by the fact that judges are, of course, politically appointed. I keep saying you should stop doing that. You end up with corrupt judges. And even the good ones are then treated as being corrupt because you don't know which are the corrupt ones and which are not. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.